Does new camera season ever really end? It sure does not feel like it based on the number of new cameras that have been announced over the last year or so. If you are particularly a Blackmagic Pocket 4K user, well, you may be looking at the 6K Pro that was announced just over a month ago and thinking, finally, I should upgrade to this one. Or shouldn't I? Should I just get a RED? Are any of these upgrades worth it? I'll try to answer a few of those. The Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K Pro. I'm sorry, it's an absolute mouthful. The name is ridiculous. It should have been called the Ursa Micro or pretty much anything not involving the pocket name that needs to be dropped completely. And this abbreviation, what? What am I supposed to do with that? I don't, that doesn't look cool in hiring emails. I know this joke has been done since the original Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera, but I have to try to put this thing in my pocket. <laughs> I try not to focus too much on specs, but we're gonna run through the ones that should be important to you if you're considering upgrading as fast as I possibly can. Ready? 6K, super 35 sensor EF mount, built-in ND filters, tilting screen, Sony MP batteries, two XLR inputs, and mounting points on the top and bottom. I always find it hysterical when camera companies include mounting points as a feature. Like, yeah, we've got quarter 20 mounts on the top and bottom of our camera. Oh, I'm gonna buy a $2,500 piece of equipment and it's not gonna include the obvious and easy way for me to attach a tripod? You can leave that on your feature list all you would like, but we should probably raise the bar for what constitutes an actual feature. You can find all of this and more on the side of the box, which we definitely need to take a moment to talk about. This looks like a knockoff of a knockoff. As long as the images look as good as they do, I can ignore these design choices, but. This looks like something you could buy at a place that also sells two for 10, I Heart New York t-shirts, but the one that have the Apple, that kind of campy tchotchke travel shop electronic. And it doesn't really match the pro name. It just says ND filters exclamation point. Who approved this? If you're coming from the 4K version of the camera, your biggest upgrades are the larger resolution, the bigger sensor, and the built-in ND filters. And in all these areas, the camera delivers. The image is fantastic. I've been working with Micro Four Thirds on that old camera for a while, but Super 35 does give you a more rich image. 6K right now is overkill for today's delivery requirements, but it is nice to be able to have that extra resolution for punching in. The tilt screen is nice to have and is noticeably brighter, but it is gonna take some getting used to for me. On the old 4K setup, I had a top monitor mounted pretty much all the time. So now that I have this, it's a little weird for me to look down into a monitor or raise the camera up to see here. It's just gonna take some getting used to it, and it definitely is nice to have in more run and gun situations. And then there are the ND filters. And I'm not joking when I say this is the most important feature to me. It's pretty much why I bought the camera. Having two, four, and six stop NDs built in at the touch of a motorized button is an absolute dream. I had become so sick of bringing all these ND filters on every job, changing the intensity, swapping between lenses. It was not a fun experience ever again. Just like the Ursa Mini Pro and cameras like the Sony FS7 have these twistable ND solutions, it's so great to now see it available in the 6K Pro and it makes it feel more pro. Unlike that box. If you're looking at those reasons to make the upgrade, you're probably gonna be happy with your choice, but I can't let it stay all sunshine and rainbows. If you, like me, skipped the 6K upgrade last year, you might wanna consider how much bigger this thing is. It's not actually double from the Pocket 4K, which came in at 1.5 pounds, but you're gonna to have to up those weights that you're practicing on to 2.7 pounds, which I think is gonna matter over the course of a long shooting day. As well, ergonomically, the larger front area where the ND filters and EF mount are, I find a little uncomfortable because my wrist seems to bump into it where I wanna have it in this natural position to pull focus or zoom, whatever. It just doesn't feel right. Hopefully it's something I'll get used to, but as a 4K shooter coming directly to the 6K Pro, I wouldn't have known that before getting this camera. As well, the two new accessories that only work with the 6K Pro version of the camera are kind of weird. While it's great to have an EVF for shooting on a sunny day, it's in a very strange position. 
Normally, you'd mount a cinema camera onto a shoulder rig and have the EVF come out onto your eye so you can get clear view of your image. But on this camera, it's mounted exactly like it would be on a stills camera, straight in the center. So if you want to use it, you need to have your camera up here or maybe more like this. It's just kind of strange and it's not something you can use in a variety of mounting situations. It works great, but it's $500 and I can't use it on a shoulder rig. Second, the battery grip adds a whole lot of weight. And while it does help keep the camera a little more stable for something that doesn't have image stabilization, it's just really heavy to hold and would be quite difficult to do all day. And again, awkward wrist positioning for me. It just kind of bumps up here and almost feels like my arm is stuck in between the battery grip and the bottom of the camera. The EVF, the battery grip, just kind of weird. If your priorities when upgrading from the 4K kit are the larger Super 35 sensor, the built-in NDs, and all the other positive we've gone over, you're probably going to be happy and you'll be able to sell off your 4K kit. That's something I feel like people don't acknowledge as often, especially when talking about upgrading on YouTube. You'll be able to sell off a lot of the old kit if the market is right and the timing is right, which enable you to make this incremental purchase and upgrade. See, for me, I had the Pocket 4K Pro already with the adapter with three native micro four thirds and lenses, things I won't be able to use anymore now that I've got the 6K Pro. That camera, its cage, and a few accessories should net me about $1,100. The adapter itself will add another 300, and those native micro four thirds lenses will add up to another 800. So I'm looking at $2,200 in what I'm selling. The actual cost of the 6K Pro is $2,500. So the cost to me out of pocket is only around 300 a lot lower than the original price tag of $2,500. So don't buy into the hype of seeing a YouTuber buy all the new cameras and upgrade because they're probably not showing you behind the scenes all the stuff they're listing on eBay. I wish people would disclose this part more often, so I just wanted to add this 30 seconds of honesty. Back to why I upgraded and why you might want to upgrade. I'm not one to just read a spec sheet, but all these features were really important to me and they center around one common theme, efficiency. All these things make my workflow faster, and I think that should be at the top of your list when thinking about upgrading something. I've said it before, does it make your life easier? For me, even with the new drawbacks that I wasn't aware of because they weren't on the 4K version of the camera, all these upgrades make my life so much easier and faster on set. Not worrying about screwing on ND filters, having longer battery life than I have to switch as often, is all just stuff that's gonna stop you from losing a take or from being the reason production is waiting. It's an important question to ask yourself, and it's one that stops you from just buying the latest tech. For now, I think it's only fair I show you a comparison clip between the 4K and the 6K Pro with some soothing music underneath as you hover over that add to cart button that you've had open this whole time. But before you click that button, click the subscribe button below and like this video. It really helps me out and tells the internet, hey, I hope this guy makes more like it, and I hope I get to watch more of them. I'll trust you to do the right thing. Roll the clip. Did that help you finally make up your mind if this one is the one for you to upgrade? If it is or is not, I wanna know why in the comments below because I could talk about this stuff all day. I won't try to sway you, but I will chime in. Thanks for watching and until next time, I'm off walking.